Good morning and welcome to Tony Romarco Ministries. Before we start the sermon, I'd like to say prayers from all of us here at the ministry to all those affected at the Parkland tragedy, the shooting in Parkland, Florida. Prayers to the victims, the families, and those affected, as well as to the fire up in the DeSoto, Missouri. We have our prayers and our hearts are with you. And to the shootings in Texas, our prayers and hearts are with you also. Please keep the faith and know that God is with you and that he loves you. Today's sermon is two questions. God's children, lately, a lot of them are asking, where is God? The question God has for you is, where are my children? People ask that in today's day and age because of the world and it's broken. And it's even more broken. Now, a lot more people are turning to God, which is a great thing. But they're also asking, why is God allowing this to happen? Where is he? Well, God has that right to ask his children the same question. We're going to get that into it a little bit later. People also ask, is this the end? God only knows when it's the end. And Jesus, who is given authority in all of heaven and all of earth, has said it too. Only the Father knows the exact day and time. The end is not near, or it could be near, but we don't know. And Jesus doesn't want us guessing. He doesn't want us wasting our time worrying about it because when you worry about something, you're taking a minute away from your joy. When you worry a minute about anything, you're taking a minute away from Jesus and spending time with him. You're taking a minute away from the Father. Worrying doesn't change the outcome. As his children, we have to accept what is that we cannot change. We have to act and not react to situations. That's how Jesus does it. He doesn't react, he acts. It looks like the end, but in my heart and in praying to Jesus, it's not. He's just giving us the message to turn around and to what it's like without him. He's trying to tell us to turn back to him. People ask, well, God's children need him. Well, his adults need him because his adults are his children also. We're all his children. And yes, we do need him. The children need him as bad as the adults need him. A lot of them have him in his heart. A lot of them are turning back and accepting Jesus as their Savior. That's a great thing. But there are a lot out there that don't have God. They don't know him. They don't know Jesus. They don't have Jesus. And it hurts them because when they see people who do have Jesus, they don't know how to react. Churches need him. More so today than in the past. Remember, when you're going to church, you need to not only worship God in there and worship Jesus, you need to worship him seven days a week. A lot of the churches... The people that go in don't really have Jesus in there. They're worried about money. They're worried about population. They're worried about the size of the congregation. They really need to worry about Jesus, to worry about God, to spread his gospel, his message. The schools need him. He was taken out of the schools. Need to be brought back in. Businesses need him. A lot of people think they run their business on their own. God, by his grace, gives you the wisdom to run the business. Homes need him. A lot of the homes, they're broken, dysfunctional. Parents working, single parents, double jobs, triple jobs. They're not spending time together as a family. 
They're not spending time with God and talking about God in their homes and bringing them. We need to bring more of that back in. Our beautiful country needs him. The world needs him. And you can see that. You can experience that. So those of us who already accepted Jesus as our Savior, we need to keep praying. We need to keep going out there and preaching his gospel, ministering his gospel, and understand that hurting people hurt people. When people hurt us, we need to forgive, not just walk away. We need to forgive. We need to understand. We have to try to get those in the darkness to turn back to God, not away from him. Now, God asks, and he has every right to because he has free will, because that's a gift he gave to us. So therefore, he has his choices too. And he asks all of us, well, my children are always asking, where am I? Well, where are my children? Many do nothing but evil. The world is polluted. The oceans are polluted. The forest, do people throw garbage in the forest? They throw garbage on each other's property. They destroy each other's property. They have riots. They vandalize. They ruin people's businesses that people were taught for. So God is asking, well, you want me, now where are you? You do nothing but destroy everything. Now, not all of us, like I said, do it. But you know that there are people out there that do it. They protest. They destroy others, what others worked hard for. God is asking you, the world is broken, but now where are you as my child to help fix that? To help fight evil? Evil can only continue if you allow it. Evil can only drop, thrive if you allow it. Is this the end? As I said before, only the Father knows the exact time and day. And Jesus doesn't want us worrying about that. He wants us to live. He wants us to preach his gospel, to bring people back to him. Not worry about when the end is. God wants to know... Where are his children? How come he was taken out of the schools? How come there are no prayers in schools? Some schools have it. I've read it on Facebook. I don't know how true it is, but that some states already passed laws where they're allowing the Bible study and Bible reading and prayers back into schools again. All the states need to do that. They need to bring God back into schools. The universities and colleges, I'm sure some of them have prayer groups and study groups. Now, those that are in those prayer and study groups, are you doing your best to minister to God to and Jesus to others? Or are you just sitting in your group, no matter what size, small, medium, or large, and just being amongst yourself studying the Bible? It's good to study the word. He wants us to abide in his word. But that's not all it takes. We have to go out and live the word, preach the word, get the word out there. A lot of the schools take out in God we trust. They don't even, a lot of them don't do the Pledge of Allegiance. That hurts God. So now he's asking you, you want me, where are you now? And something can be done about it. That something is prayer. You keep praying until something changes, till the situation changes. Already, like I just said, some states are allowing by law, they passed the law to allow prayer back in school and Bible study. You got to keep praying so more states do that. God wants to be a part of your life. Yes, he's in you. You're his temple. But he's not going to force himself, and neither is Jesus, on you. You have the free will to choose him. 
to accept his son. It's up to you to do it. You're always asking it for him. He's asking you to come seek him. And you pray continuously until the situation changes. You pray for those who hurt you. You forgive them. You pray and forgive those who persecute you. Now, Jesus also said, don't be an enabler and be a doormat. But you still need to pray for them. Love your enemies. Do the best you can. Understand each other. Churches. There's very, some churches, there are a few attendants. Some churches, there are a lot. And remember, going to a house of worship is not the only thing that makes you a good Christian. It doesn't only only thing to make you a follower of Jesus because Jesus knows what's in your heart God knows what's in your heart they created your heart so if you're just going to go to church once a week show the world you're there yeah you're fooling them yeah I'm here but if you're not going to live what the church teaches if you're not going to live what Jesus teaches and be a true follower a true disciple and live that every day, then how can you call yourself a good Christian or a good follower of Christ? You go to church, church should be every day, every day in your heart, one day in the building, every day in your heart. Businesses, God gives you, by his grace, the wisdom to run the business, the wisdom and the knowledge to seek and give you the resources and put the ideas in your head to get the resources. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have a business. Yes, yeah, some businesses go under. But God doesn't like to be blamed for that either. It's not his fault we don't do things. He suggests things and we either listen or we don't. And we're all guilty of that, myself included. God will say something and sometimes I listen and sometimes I don't. He wants us. He wants to be a part of our life, not just on Sundays or Saturdays or worship day, but every day, every second. He wants to be involved in every aspect. Nothing is too small for him to be involved with. Homes. God understands you need to make a living. God understands it's a lot harder today. You got single parents, mothers, single fathers, single mothers. They're working double jobs. He understands that. He's not asking for a quantity of time. He's not asking you to change your schedule to suit him. The Father is asking you to spend quality time with him. He wants to be part of your home. He wants to be a part of your family. It's not the quantity. It's the quality. He wants the parents to discuss him, to discuss his son. Because change starts with an individual. Change starts with you. Change starts at home. God loves you. That's the message. Jesus loves you. That's his message. So if they love you so much, and if you don't believe me and that God loves you, take a look at John 3, 16. That should be enough. So he wants to be a part of your life. He wants you not to be ashamed when you're home to say your prayers, to thank him for blessings. So, and of the people see it, that's great. Because sooner or later, they'll follow you. And when they're home, they'll talk about God and thank him for his blessings and praise him. It's the quality of time. He wants you to be genuine. When you go to him for a favor at home with your children together, or even with your wives if your children are on their own, and you and your wife are sitting home, or even if you're a single and you're all home alone, he wants you to spend quality time with him. You could spend five minutes quality time, an hour quality time, but it needs to be quality. It needs to be genuine from your heart, since he already knows your heart. He wants you to talk to him. Tell him about your day. Tell him about your problems. Give him your problems. That's what he wants. Tell him about your hope, your dreams. He wants that. The country, he wants to be a part of this beautiful country. He wants to be a part of every country. He wants to help the leaders run the country. He wants people to praise him. 
He wants people to know his name. He wants them to know his son. He wants to bring love and peace back to each and every one of you and mend everyone's heart. Go out there and pray. Go out there and help each other. Go out there and like each other. Go out there and be understanding. You don't have to live with each other. You don't have to have dinner with each other. But a kind word can change somebody's life around. You don't know what storm they're going through. The same thing with the bullies. Obviously, bullies are bully. That's why they do it. Hurting people hurt people. But to bully somebody, that's not right either. Talk to somebody. If you're hurting, don't bully somebody else. Go to somebody you can trust. Tell them your problems. Tell them you're hurting. Somebody's picking on you at work, in the job place. Go to HR. Talk to somebody. Don't hold it in. Don't be ashamed. And don't be ashamed to, to talk to God. Don't be ashamed to praise him in public. Don't be ashamed when you're in a diner or a restaurant before you eat your meal to join in prayer and thank him. Other people see it. If they say anything or make fun, what do you care? Forgive them. They're hurting. God cares about each and every one of us. He wants us to thank him, to praise him, to give him the glory. Because like Jesus said, all glory and honor go to my Father in heaven. Glorify him. S smile to somebody. Help him out. Listen. Be a good listener. Try to understand each other. Thank you for joining me today. And please, for the victims of all the shootings, and the fires and their families please continue to pray keep praying because the situation will change for the better if we really all go together in hearts and pray to the father he wants to be a part of your life he wants to be a part of the country he wants to influence all the leaders to do the right thing he wants to guide them. And why not? He's the creator. He knows best. Care for each other. Don't make fun of each other. Don't tear each other down. Build each other up. Love each other. Respect each other. Understand each other as best you can. It's better to understand than to be understood. Let people see God shine through you. Let them see Jesus shine through you. Let them hear God's words and Jesus' words and their love come through you. And you'll be surprised. It all starts at home. It all starts with one individual at home. Spend time with your family. Talk about God. Let love emanate from your inner being in your home. So when people walk in there, they feel the love and the home. It's easier said than done, but if we keep praying. And remember, when somebody says, did you try everything? And you say, yeah. And then they ask you, well, did you try praying? And you say, well, no. Then you didn't try everything. Prayer is powerful. When we go to the Father from a true heart, a genuine heart. And we bring our hopes, our dreams, our anxieties, our anger, our problems. Turn all that over to him. You'll be surprised what will happen. I'm Reverend Tony, and thank you for joining me today in this sermon. And please join me again next week and for our next sermon. Go out there. Be all God created you to be. And please... Continue to walk in the presence of God. You'll be glad you did. I wish you all a happy, safe, and blessed Sunday with you and your loved ones. And to all those who are dealing with these horrible tragedies, again, from all of us at Tony Ramaco Ministries, and I'm sure from all the ministries around the country and around the world and all the churches, 
You're in our hearts. You're in our prayers. Please keep the faith. God is with you. He is comforting you. God bless you, each and every one of you.